Hi, so in this tutorial we're going to look at drawing paths on the canvas. So um, let's get started by firstly drawing up a canvas on uh, in the body section of the web page. So in the body section we can say canvas and we can give it an ID of my canvas, or something like that, and specify its width and height. So I'm going to give this one a width of 500 and might give it a height of 500 as well. Okay, and then we can apply a style to this um, canvas. So in the head section of the web page, we can use the style tags. And inside the style tags, we can uh, specify a style for the canvas by referring to its ID, which is my canvas. So we can specify a background color I'll just leave it as white for the moment and a border of one pixel solid and make it black just so we can see where the canvas actually is on the web page. Now in the body section we can add some JavaScript. So we'll add the opening and closing script tags and inside these script tags will create a function called draw to draw on the canvas. All right, so we'll set it up first saying var ctx equals document dot get element by ID. And the ID is my canvas dot get context 2D. So this allows us to use all the different um, properties on the canvas. All right, ctx dot begin path. So we are going to um, reset the current de default path. And on the next line, you can say ctx.move2. So we'll specify where um, a line will actually begin. And we'll make it up the top left corner of the canvas. So we can just say ctx.move2 um, 50 and 50. All right, so X position of 50, Y position of 50. Just add a comment there to remind us of that. All right, so now we're going to, we've already specified where the line, the line will begin. Now we can specify where the line will go to. So we can actually create a uh, rectangle here. So what I'll do is I'll make the um, line move across the screen so I'll say ctx dot line two and I'll make that three hundred and fifty so it will stay at the same um, it will um, move across on the x axis so it will go to three hundred on the x position and the y position will remain fifty. Alright what we'll do is uh, we might just say um, ctx dot stroke and it's just a little typo there. So ctx.stroke, and then we'll call this function when the page loads using a window.onload event. And we'll just open this up in the browser to have a look at what it looks like so far. Okay, so there we go. We've got a line there. All right, so it starts at x position 50 and y position 50, and then it draws itself across here and ends at the x position of... 300 and the Y position of 50. All right, so we can add a little bit more here. Now we can say um, where we want the line to move down to. So we'll say ctx.line2 and we'll keep the X position the same, but now the Y position will um, actually go down. So we can say something like maybe a Y position of 200. Refresh, okay. So now it's gone down to an X position of 300 and Y position of 200. We'll add a little bit more. So we can say, um, what have we got so far? So we've got 50, uh, 300, and then 50 for Y position, 300, and then 200. So what we'll do is say ctx.line2. Okay, and then we can say 
uh, we'll go to an X position of 50 again, back to the beginning, and a Y position of um, 200. All right, there we go. So that's what we have. The line begins there, X position 50, Y position 50, and then it moves across to the right, X position 300, Y position 50. Then it moves down to X position 300 and Y position 200. And then it moves back over to the left to an X position of 50 and a Y position of 200. All right. Now what we can say here is we could add uh, ctx.fill. All right, and that will actually, if we go back to that and refresh, it will actually fill this um, shape that we've made, even though it wasn't a complete shape. Then what we can also say is ctx dot, ctx dot close path. So what I'll do is I'll comment out ctx.fill so we know how to actually fill the shape without even um, closing the path. But what I'll do is add ctx.close path. I just need to put brackets there as well. Save and refresh. And now look at that. So the line, we had a line going across here, line going down there, and then line going across here. Once we add ctx.close path, it actually closes from the end of the line, the last line, to the beginning of the first line. So it actually closes the gap there between those lines and essentially makes a fourth line to close this shape. And so that's just done using ctx.closePath. So it closed the path to complete the rectangle by adding the last line on the left side of the rectangle. Okay, so um, we could also fill that again. But what we could do is we could change the fill style. So we could say ctx.fill style. Um, and then we could, in this section, we could change the um, color of the fill. So um, basically um, fill it with a different color. So we could say equals and then we could quotation marks. We could maybe make it like red. So we could use the, we could either say red or we could use the hexadecimal color code and save and refresh and now it seems to be black because I've made a typo <laughs> all right so ctx fill style there we go it's red now all right we could change the line width ctx dot line width and we don't need quotation marks but we could make this 20 so it's a really thick line and so now we've got a thick line around there. Anyway, so that is how to um, basically use close path to um, close this shape and add that extra line on the end. And um, it'll, yeah, it'll actually close the path. What we can also do is check whether a specified point that we're looking at is within a path. So what we might do is say we'll make an alert okay so we'll add an alert and what this alert will basically return is it will return a true or false value in an alert message indicating whether a specified point is within a path so we can use ctx dot is point in path and then we can specify the point that we want to check all right so we could say something like 100 comma 100 because we know that's inside the path all right okay so just a typo here missed out the t there so I'll change that back to alert save and refresh and now it says true because that point that we specified is within the path what if we change it to something like 30 and 30 so exposition of 30 and a Y position of 30. It should say false because the point which will be around about here, X position and Y position of 30, is not inside this path. So now it says false when we refresh the page. So we get that alert saying false. All right, so just again, quick summary. 
We can use ctx.closePath to close the path and add an extra line there to and join up um, the lines that we had to make a full rectangle. And we can also use ctx.isPointInPath to check if a specific or specified point is within a path. Thanks for watching.